Hi friends. I don't exactly know where this is going, but let's go with it and just see. Um, I've gotten my voice back, pretty much, and recovered from the cleansing reaction. I uh, tail spinned, tail spun off into. Um, but, you know, I'm working with herbs and things, and I, I kind of overdid it again. It's, it's pretty funny. Our bodies can only take so much, and yet our spirits just want to, as they say, put the pedal to the metal and just go and uh, balance. Oh, my God. Thank God. I have almost 60 years on this planet, so there's a, a little bit of balance here. I really like balance. How about you? And yet, you know, there's that spirit that... Uh, there's a, a wonderful substance that my... Uh, that Ken, the intuitive healer I work with, has me taking. It's called Gold 360. G-O-L-D 360 and it's fascinating and uh, I fell so in love with it it was like my body just went nuts over it and just wanted more and more and so uh, you know within some limits I indulged that and uh, got to feeling pretty heavy and so on and so on and and now the body has backed off a bit it's pretty amazing and there's another odd thing you know the body has its own intelligence you're not the mind you're not the body these are projections of identity from higher dimensions and so we're present we're resident within them so to speak not in our fullness but they also have their own intelligence and their own being even separate from the spirit that incarnates here and I found it fascinating that, as a for instance, um, I started taking, not bee pollen, royal jelly. And it was mixed with honey, and I was having fun with it, you know. I would use it in place of jelly on toast and in different ways like that. And then one day I decided to go for it. And I bought a bottle of straight royal jelly. It was a bit pricey. It was uh, 60 or $70. But, you know, I indulged the body. It, uh, I helped get it ill, and I'm doing all I can to return it to health. And so it came in a cold pack, and I put it right in the fridge, and... Oh my goodness, I was so disappointed when I tasted it. It tasted terrible. The dose was only one quarter teaspoon per day. And uh, it, was, it was hard to get it down. I couldn't take it straight, so I mixed it with honey and coconut oil and different things. And in speaking with Ken, when I mentioned this to him, his response was, hmm. He was the one that suggested mixing it with honey so that the body would be better able to recognize it and make use of it. Th that didn't quite add up for me, but I went ahead and, and did what he said, and it got easier. And then when this gold 360 came in, aha, it's got a nice strong taste, and it, uh, it, it was a great substance to uh, mix in the royal jelly with. 
Well, the interesting thing is that over this period of time, uh, the body no longer rejects the taste. I can lick the spoon clean. And I realize now that's what Ken was saying. It was the body itself that was rejecting the substance by making it taste bad, or not by making it taste bad, but anyway, that's, that's kind of what that was. You know, we live and we learn, and we all have different talents and abilities, and we're given vision into the things that are, um, that are our talents, the things that we've worked on. Uh, healers have a special vision and ability to penetrate with that vision. Um, and it's, it's a wondrous thing to uh, share with their brethren. Imagine if the healers kept all their blessings to themselves. That wouldn't do. Not at all. Okay. Now, in my meditation this morning, several things came to me. I've spoken before about how being balanced in time is like the, the horizontal beam on the cross and you want to be right where the crossbars meet and that is to be centered in the present moment and otherwise you know it's it's like a seesaw or a teeter-totter to be to the left or to the right side of it is to be off in the past or the future and not really present and that's interesting and then if you take the vertical beam that can be seen is uh, as being moving uh, in on the on the what do we want to say the axis of spirit and matter. How present are you? Right there where the body is, and that would be to be pinned right on the cross point, and that would be ideal uh, to be fully present where you are and when you are. And that's really handy. I find that the God spot or the point of connection with that. I don't really know how to wrap words around these things. I do what I can. I realize we all have different shades of meaning for the same words. But to the extent that you can listen from within heart, we do have heart in common. There's a oneness there. I put something in my favorites, and I think I even put it at the top of the list yesterday, something that someone sent me. Now, don't laugh, please. Or laugh if you like. A good belly laugh would be fine. I don't know who Bob Marley is. I know I've heard the name, but I've stayed very much on the fringes of popular society. So I never really got into the music. Um, I was born in the 50s. And uh, I just never really got deeply into it. I don't know the personalities and that kind of thing. But I think it's called Playing for Change. I suppose uh, it's, a, it's a documentary, and this is one clip from it where they take Bob Marley's song, I guess it's called One Love, I'm not even sure of that, but I know I cried for the beauty of the editing, for the beauty of the hearts and the souls from around the world that joined in to, uh, to play for change internal change everywhere and in everyone to invite everyone into heart that's what that piece is doing and as you see even now it touches me and in the end I think the guys in Kat Kathmandu I'm not sure when he puts his hand on his heart at the close the tears just pour it's just the beauty of it you know there's so much heart in it so uh, I'll try to remember to put a link with uh, with this piece 
so that you can experience that. I think even if you're not in heart when you start watching it, by the end you will be, by the middle you will be. It's just so beautiful. Such beautiful, beautiful energies. And we're all capable of that. Just like the healers share their gifts and their talents, these are the musicians who are healers in a different way, sharing theirs. And their talents are sizable. What are our talents? It's the way we use energy and the way we're best with it. And it, it just raises our brethren up right along with us. It helps us all onto an ascending spiral. <sighs> okay, where was I going with this? I don't know. One love, one heart, that's what we all are. I wanted to share, you know, it's the little things, people. It's being present in the moment. There was some um, discussion on a thread in Skype last night that I was a part of and watching and and you realize everywhere that people are so surprised when you speak up and say this has been happening with me and they go oh my gosh I've been going through that too I wasn't saying anything about it I thought it was a little crazy and there's that real sense of comfort and of stepping into community as we realize even in these little things we're going through so much of the same thing so I'm going to talk about little things for a minute now aside from the fact that I keep overdoing it with the herbs and the audios you know um, all of our bodies are going through renewal we're going from being creatures of flesh and bone to a more crystalline structure a structure of light that really is crystalline and this conversion is happening by the solar wind, the solar rays, the uh, cosmic rays, the rising of frequencies everywhere. Uh, there are new emissions from the black holes everywhere uh, that are uh, something of our generation that were never there before that was detected. There are all kinds of things ongoing in the realms where our senses don't give us readings and so we don't see them and people locked in mind are so locked into this whole concept that if they can't see touch taste smell or feel it it doesn't exist and that's okay leave them alone you know maybe they're the sheep on the hillside that Jesus said just leave them alone because the thing that's real is you right where you are that's where you have power leave other people alone uh, what anyone else, even those closest around you, do say or think is, is really and truly none of your business. Um, but even more than that, it's not advantageous for the whole, for anyone to be reaching out and trying to correct someone else. Um, it's a free will thing. If they ask for help, that's different. Otherwise, let's be respectful and realize, well, just follow heart. Heart will lead you where you need to go. Okay, now I, I want to share something that I've kept quiet about because it was so bizarre, but um, for months now I've been losing skin amazingly over my eyebrows and under or not in the eyebrow and under the eyebrow close to the nose um, it flakes off so tremendously um, it looks like I have a white substance there when I wake up in the morning it's just amazing and I got to wear uh, as a part of my cleanup I, I had to apply a moisture cream well, I didn't have to. I chose to apply a moisture cream there 
in order to help with that. And it, it's very point specific, you know. It was about uh, halfway across the eye toward the center and uh, including in the eyebrow it just looked like tremendous shedding of skin. Well, and there are various feelings in the head, discomforts here and there, pains here and there that seem to move. Um, and it's just kind of interesting. And I mention it because a lot of what we're going through right now seems to be working on the pituitary and the pineal. Now that's my guess. That's not necessarily the case. Maybe it's the hypothalamus. I don't know. It's working on, on the brain and the endocrine glands that are there. Maybe it's the central nervous system. I don't know. You know, I didn't come in this time as a healer. Although those energies can flow through me, it's just not something I'm generally called to do. So I don't have or pursue that depth of understanding of such things. Uh, and interestingly, uh, lately, the shedding of skin has moved down to the nose. Go figure. There are all kinds of things going on on the inside of these bodies, my friends. That's, that's what I'm saying. That let's not let the brain get a hold of, the mind and thought get a hold of, trying to establish what these things are or to write them off. Let's just be aware that we're going through magnificent changes. The Schumann resonance itself, which was steady, it seemed like forever, is just rising and rising. The North Pole is headed lickety-split for Siberia, and the South Pole is not moving as quickly, the magnetic poles I'm discussing. All kinds of changes are going on that are just not visible to the senses and they have an effect on the body, they have an effect on the DNA. Even light itself has an effect on the DNA. There is scientific experimentation that establishes this. And so if you want to do some research on it, you might enjoy that. It depends. Where does heart take you? Just try to let heart be in the driver's seat and not mind. Now, here's the other thing that I wanted to share with you and it's pretty deep so be in heart for this. I've mentioned a time or two before and in a recent journal how the mind is like the inner Illuminati. Uh, point for point, characteristic for characteristic, uh, they behave pretty much the same and they can be, we can be manipulated via the mind the mind being the matrix, how we've been shoved into uh, a cage that is the left brain and taught and trained intensively to live our lives there until we actually develop an identity that is so tied up with the mind that we think we are that. That's the reason when you attack someone's idea they get all up in arms that person is so identified with their mind that to attack their idea they take as an attack upon them. That's what that is. And so we're learning to back away, to step back, to disidentify, and to, to sink within heart, to settle there. You can, you're, you're present everywhere when you're present in heart. I hope you've all heard of quantum entanglement. Um, it's the way that all particles are connected. And the theory, you know, behind it is that everything was held in one central point at the Big Bang and then it all split out from there and so everything retains the imprint of the oneness. Well, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, the mind can have all the theories it wants. 
the thing is, from the point of heart, you're literally in the heart of every atom and molecule everywhere, and everything is connected. How does this apply to the mind and to the Illuminati? You have within you something that is totally resonant with the Illuminati, the powers that be, and the way of the use of energy and the being in power and control, not being willing to give up the reins of authority to the point where we have to divorce from the mind, so to speak. We absolutely have to shuck it, at least for a time, in order to put the heart in the driver's seat. And I'm on the other side of this, so I can report that mind does become cooperative um, at a certain point. It quits trying to trip you up and to interfere with your contemplation and meditation and uh, all of that sort of thing. At a certain point, it comes on board and allows heart to be in control. But it's like the Illuminati. It's not giving up power willingly ain't happening. Well, here's the beauty of that. As you go within and work with self, as you're doing your stepping back work, you're observing, you're also inviting light in. You're making the choice to be the higher self. And as that light floods and flows in, by your stepping back, from the mind, you're allowing, maybe even directing that light to flow through the mind. And you're doing a healing there. That healing is and will be reflected on the outside. My friends, if we were all to do this one thing, the Illuminati on the outside would dissolve. The inside and the outside are that connected. Everything is quantum entangled in creation. Everything is one. And so whatever it is, even though it seems to be on the outside of you, it is not. And by your work on yourself, this is the way we clean up the earth. This is the true way of it. As it is cleaned up within, and it's not the easiest work in the world, but heart knows what it's doing. And following heart will just lead you there. As it's cleaned up on the inside, it, it can't be sustained on the outside. All of the outside appearance is sustained by what is within. And so you don't need to clean up anything for your brother. Or if you want to clean up your brother, go clean up yourself. See, the teaching that Jesus brought is really infinitely deeper than what people understood at the time. Or, let me change that. I don't know what was understood at the time because the teaching has been so mucked with by the religions. Let's just say it was deeper than the teaching that's come down to us. But we all have our own inner teacher. We are uncontrollable once we connect up with heart. Once we really lock into this divinity that we have within, there's no power on the earth or off of it that can control you then. It's not doable. It's divinity there. But we can take this one little way of understanding that by cleaning up our own use of the mind we do a work for the world the little things aren't so little, my friends. That's a lie. 
among many other ones that comprise the matrix. So let's step up and out of this and into heart. Good day.